Praise God, amen. It's good to see everyone, amen. Let's all stand tonight, amen. Those are live streaming with us, amen. Join us in this second night of revival. Let's get the mindset of worship, amen, as we sing this song together all day long. Let's clap our hands, amen. Worship God tonight. Hallelujah. Come on. All day long, I've been with Jesus. It's been a wonderful day. I've climbed up, watched him higher in a good old-fashioned way. I've spoken words of kindness, but you know if I've done wrong. I go now to make you rise so I can testify tonight I've been with Jesus all day long. All day long I've been with Jesus. It's been a wonderful day. I've climbed up one step higher in a good old-fashioned way. I've spoken words of kindness, but you know if I've done wrong. How to make it right so I can testify tonight I've been with Jesus. I command you, amen. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to stomp all over. Come on. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority. To stomp for, oh, I command you. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to stomp all over thee. We have a vision. We have a vision for this nation. We share dreams. For this land, we join the angels in celebration, and by faith we speak revival to this land, where every knee shall bow, worship. For this nation, we share dreams, we share dreams for this land. We join the angels in celebration. For this nation, come on, we share dreams for this land. We join the angels in celebration.
Father, we worship you tonight, God. We honor you tonight. You have your way, God, as we wait upon your spirit tonight. You have it your way tonight, Father. We thank you. We give you glory and praise tonight, Lord. As we slow it down, amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Feel the presence of God, amen, tonight. Those are just tuning in. We welcome you tonight. Let's continue to worship him, amen. As we sing this song, you are my righteousness, Lord. Thank you. You delivered me from darkness unto life. You give in my soul abundant life. Majestic is your name. And my lips shall sing your praise, and my heart shall cry aloud and say, You're my righteousness, you're my strength, you're my redeemer, and my lips shall sing your praise. I shall sing your praise and my heart shall cry aloud hey, let's sing it tonight amen you're my righteousness you're my strength yes Lord. you're my redeemer and my lips shall sing your praise I lift hands to you to bless your name Sacrifice. Oh, let's sing it one more time from the top. You delivered me. You delivered me from darkness unto life. Thank you, Lord. You giving my soul abundant life. Majestic is your name, and my lips shall sing your praise. And my heart shall cry aloud and say, Come on, you're my righteousness, you're my strength, you're my strength, you're my redeemer, you're my redeemer, yes, Lord. And my lips shall sing your praise. I lift my hands to you to bless your name. My life a sacrifice. Come on. Oh, you're my righteousness. You're my righteousness. You're my strength. Yeah. You're my redeemed. Thank you, Lord. And my lips shall sing your praise. I lift my hands to you to bless your name. Amen. 
hands, take my heart. Take my heart and hold it. Take my mind, transform me. Take my will, conform me to your, to your. Yes, Lord. It's what I need Righteousness, righteousness Is what you want from me Let's lift our voice, amen Take my heart Take my heart Amen. Let's sing it. Amen. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what you want. Hallelujah, let's sing it, amen. Take my heart. Take my heart and pull me. Take my mind. God, you transform me. Take my will. Take my will. You can pull me to your. Oh, yes, amen. Take Boys, one more time, amen. God, you take our hearts tonight. Take my heart, God, and for me. Oh, thank you, Lord. My Lord, transform. Take my will. Take my will. Conform to you. together tonight. Father, we worship you tonight. God, we worship you, Lord. We exalt your holy name, oh God. God, have your way this evening, Father. We worship you. Amen. Let's continue in the presence of God this evening. We want to just lift up several needs. We want to believe God in corporate prayer for these hearts. We want to pray healing for Marie, Lola, Roman, Patricia, Santino, 
and then salvation for the Tobis Fur family. Uh, ben also needs healing. And we also want to pray for Dallas CG uh, salvation. These need salvation. Also Thomas uh, family healing for Emma Rose and Dilkin. Uh, also pray for Roxanne. I believe needs work employment. Uh, Safety for uh, Alfredo, or Alfredo needs a prayer for uh, safety for his nephew and support for housing. Let's pray God's favor, God's breakthrough upon that. Uh, let's continue to pray for uh, Pastor Daniel and his wife, Veronica there in Modesto, for Pastor Warner, his wife, the Tucson congregation, for Pastor Greg and his wife in Prescott, uh, Pastor Foley and his wife in uh, McMinnville course for Uruguay. Pray for us here in the city of Lakewood that God will continue to give us a dominion, give us breakthrough as we continue to press forward. Let's pray for this revival and let's pray just that we come again expecting for the spirit of God to move upon us, that we give him a platform in which to move. Now we can pray God move, God move, but if we don't give him the platform to, room, to move, if we don't give him the room to move, then how is he supposed to move? And so he's willing, but the question is, is are we willing to let him? Let's allow our hearts to be exposed. We come uh, not only carrying burdens, but we come bearing all these gifts, right, that we want to be able to lay them at the, at the feet of Jesus, saying, God, I want to give you this gift, this burden that I've been carrying on my life. I, I give it to you, right, that he's not going to reject it. Thank God for that. He's not going to deny you. He says, come to me. He says, cry out to me. And this is what we want to do. We want to pray for each other. Let's pray for the Spirit of God to move. Let's uh, lift our voices. Let's cry out to God this evening. And then when it's said and done, we'll have Donovan lift his voice and open us up in prayer. Let's pray, church. Father, we thank you, my God, for this time that you have given us once again the opportunity to be able to just come together in one mind and one accord, looking to you as the author and finisher of our faith. God, that you are able to establish your purpose. God, that you are able to move upon our hearts and move upon our lives. God, that you are able to give breakthrough and dominion. God, you are able to bring healing and restoration. You are able to provide and move in our behalf. God, that you are able to set free those who are captive, God. Let your spirit have right away this evening, Lord. Amen, amen. Before you sit down, turn around, greet one another this evening.
Amen. I want to welcome everyone this evening to Door Church. Glad that you are here this evening. And uh, it's your first time here. We appreciate you taking time to come and worship with us tonight. Uh, just real quick, uh, just a few announcements, just as a reminder. Uh, for those of you that are part of the local church, local area here in Lakewood, want to remind you tomorrow we're going to continue the revival service with our evangelist, Leonard Williams, uh, tomorrow morning at 11, and then tomorrow evening will be the final service at 6 o'clock. I encourage you to come be a part of these services. Bring someone. Maybe you're watching live stream. encourage you to come be here. Let the Spirit of God move upon you. Can't get words uh, when you're in the camera. So I uh, encourage anyone to come and be a part of the services. Uh, bring someone. Right. Don't uh, don't don't uh, come by yourself. If you're able to bring someone, bring them. If you've got to go pick them up, go pick them up. Do what you got to do. And so you play a, a, a big role in the kingdom of God. So you do your part. If you're able to, again, uh, bring someone, invite someone. And uh, we're going to have a great time. Uh, I believe that's all basically all the announcements. Nursery. There is nursery. Anyone between zero and four years of age uh, will have nursery in the next room over. And so if you need any information on the calendar events, please let us know, and we'll be more than happy to provide you some answers. With that, we're going to go ahead and take up our offering this evening. As our usher comes forward, I came across an article. Um, I believe this is maybe a little over a year old, but it's regarding our state budget. And it said, Washington State Senate budget leaders unveiled a $71.7 billion supplemental operating budget plan Monday that increases support for behavior, health, and public schools. Budget adds roughly $1.9 billion in new spending to the two-year budget passed by lawmakers in 2023. $71.7 billion dollars to health support to support behavior health and public schools now i get the public schools the public schools need a lot of help but behavior health listen if we could take a portion of those 71.7 billion dollars and give them to the churches imagine how much impact we can make Imagine how much more we can make. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus is handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he goes and he opens the book and he finds the place where it's written in verse, beginning in verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Listen, we have the answer. Our government leaders are missing it. Imagine if they understood this scripture that Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to break chains and, and set the captive free. That You know, you don't really need to invest into some of these programs. Just send them to church. Let them sit in some services. Let them hear the word of God. Let them respond to the altar call. Let them be prayed for. Or build places where preachers can go and minister to them, besides the prisons. But even they, Jesus says, come to set the captive free. Listen, Jesus is the answer. Thank God for programs. Thank God for all those things. But listen, do we really need to spend $71.7 billion in programs that are just going to help people keep doing what they're doing? If we can invest a portion of that even in revivals, imagine what difference we can make in people's lives. Listen, your investment into the church doesn't go uh, uh, without merit. There is a, uh, an impact that you make. And I want to encourage you to make that investment. If you're not paying your tithes, if you're not giving your tithes, listen, trust God with your finances. 
Believe God to provide. I have seen God provide in many ways. Trust him. Step out in faith. Give your tithes, your offerings, your pledges to world evangelism. Uh, keep in mind the different ways to give here on the screen. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Sean, would you pray? I command you seat. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to stomp all over. Come on. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to stomp all over. Let's sing it, amen. Come on. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to stomp over. One more time. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to stomp all over. Amen. We appreciate that this evening. For those of you that are here for the first time, you guys are in for a treat. Uh, Evangelist Leonard Williams comes ready to minister the word. Uh, he doesn't come to entertain us. He's told me that many, many times already in this last uh, day and a half that he's been with us. And uh, he's here to preach the word. And he's anxious to preach it. And so let's welcome him as he comes this evening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Appreciate that this evening. If you have your Bibles, turn with the book of John this evening. The book of John. Well, I'm going to finish up Pastor's offering about programs. Because what this world needs is deliverance. That's what this world needs. And I'm all for investing in the school district yes sir but i agree they don't need 71 billion dollars to give them mental health the answer is jesus this evening let's think about the pandemic we had in 2020 the pandemic actually paralyzed our nation, our world in itself, and the church world. What the pandemic did was just put a spirit of fear and intimidation into the earth. But I want to talk about a greater pandemic tonight. And that great epidemic is simply the sin in our, in our world, in our nation. Out of the book of John in chapter 8, verse 32 through 36, says these words. Make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, in the son makes you free. You shall be free indeed. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this evening by the blood. God, I'm asking you to hide your servant behind the cross. God, let the cross be the forefront of this evening's service. We thank you for the redemption you've given us on the cross. Lord, I'm asking right now, give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and eyes to understand. We thank you. And all God's people said, let's talk about the gospel first off. Because the gospel is a worldwide proclamation of deliverance. From the bondage of sin, poverty, sickness, and I go on and on. 
And all around us, we can see the destruction nature of this pandemic. You can see it in the neighborhoods. You can see it and visit it in the homes, in our cities. All across the world, man, we see this pandemic of sin. But as Pastor was quoting that illustration about pandemic, the rehab of mental, listen, I believe in mental illness. I believe it. But I want to tell you that's not the problem. The problem is the nature of sin. But the gospel is the cure for this pandemic. It's not about, it's amazing to me how people, rather than say, well, I'm going to use drugs again, heroin addicts, man, they no longer do heroin. But what they do is methadone. Right? You're going to trade one evil for another. Well, I, I don't, I'm not doing heroin no more. I'm just doing methadone. What's the difference? You get high either way. There's no difference. Well, uh, if you're going to use heroin, you might as well just say, well, uh, I'm not smoking crack no more. I'm just smoking a little weed. We've also dealing with the pandemic in the local body. Never before have we ever thought that we were going to have to address these things in the local church. And that is the issue of prescription drugs. It's the issue of, I have a marijuana card, right? These things have swept through. Why? Because society says, it's fine, it's legal. No, it's not. You're trading one evil for another. One of the things that COVID did, it released the spirit of fear and intimidation. It's also released, uh, amen, lots of health issues uh, that most people have no idea. I was preaching in North Carolina last year, uh, and I started talking about this uh, because I want to tell you what COVID did. Uh, it brought forth a spirit uh, of kidney disease. It brought forth diabetes and high blood pressure. All of these things manifested by the COVID. People say, well, I didn't take the COVID. I'm not talking about the shot. These things began to push people over the edge. Mental illness has gone up since COVID. Violence has gone up. It's amazing because now, you know, many people or many kids, they're no, it's no longer the, you know, the adults that are causing, amen, the abuse in the home. It's kids. It's teenagers that have caused now all of this abuse in the home simply because of COVID. They become a more angry generation than ever before. And all over the world, beloved, there are millions of people still bound by all types of drugs, bad habits, uh, immorality. I can go on and moral failure, man, and on and on. In Ephesians in chapter 4, verses 26 and 27, it says these words. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. Be angry and do not, it's, you know, it's easier said than done, isn't it? It's like, you know, uh, hey, uh, let's go to the schools and talk about, just say no to drugs, the D.A.R.E. program. Well, what you're doing is you're enlightening, you're enlightening this, this, these kids by telling them all the problems of it. And we fail to realize this. But it's amazing because here in Ephesians, be angry and do not sin, nor let the sun go down on your wrath. What Jesus is saying here, listen, in this part, of the, in this area of your life, don't allow it to manifest itself. We become a very angry society. 
road rage. No, it's just, you got an anger problem. This is the problem. And there's all over the world, man, we find people bound by every type of habit, sickness, and disease than ever before. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Pastor, right at the, it says these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. What Jesus is saying here is this. I have come to set the captives free, that no longer shall the prison doors be shut on humanity. No longer do we have to be slaves, uh, amen, to the passion of our flesh. You see, people think, well, uh, I, you know, I'm not a captive. I'm not locked away in prison somewhere. Uh, I'm not, you know, being held against my will. Uh, no, we are captives to every sin habit in the world as possible. Jesus says, I come to set you free. You know, listen, I'm not anti-doctors tonight. But it's amazing to me how many uh, will go to the doctors and immediately uh, they'll give you a prescription for something they cannot cure. And what they say is this. Here, just take this. The problem is this. They're only treating a symptom, not the problem. They're not giving you a solution. They're giving you a coping mechanism. In our text, John chapter 8, verses 32 through 36 says these words. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. The problem is people have forgotten that Jesus has come to set them free. They've forgotten that Jesus is still setting people free today. We don't have to be prisoners of our society. But he's dealing with the Jews here, and he, they, you know, they're saying, well, how can you say we're, we've been in bondage? We're Abraham's descendants, right? We're from Abraham. He's our spiritual father. How can you say this? Because they weren't getting it. They weren't getting it. They failed to realize what he was saying. And there are people, I deal with people all across the board, man, all over the world as I preach. And they all say the same thing. Pastor, you have no idea how hard it is. Yes, I do. I've been there. I was bound by every sin and habit possible to mankind but at 25 when I bowed my knee and I said God if you're real come into my life that was a moment of transformation listen completely delivered that quick I didn't realize it that night a couple days went by and I realized there was no longer an urge in me to do drugs it was no longer the urge for me to go hang out in the local bar. I no longer had the taste for it. No one ever told me, listen, you can't do drugs no more. You can't drink no more. You can't curse no more. No one ever told me that. But when I met Christ, my whole life changed. 
And I got shot at 19 years old in the face by a shotgun blast. I was sent to a rehab center, first of all, to a shrink. They, want, they wanted to diagnose me to see if I was fit to, to come back into society and work amongst the normal people because I was abnormal. You know, they asked a bunch of questions. I answered the questions, what came to my mind, and immediately said, you are borderline alcoholic. You're out of your mind. But now, how many know alcoholism, it's a sickness. Right? It's a sickness. Oh, you know, you know, no, no, I'm just ill. Yeah, because you have the wrong answer. What you need is to realize that Jesus has come to set you free. Galatians in chapter 4, verses 4 through 6 says these words. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. When the fullness of time has come, we have received the spirit of adoption. I didn't get a book on rules and regulations about Christianity. What I got was a personal relationship with the living God. I knew about God. I went to Sunday school. I went to catechism. I did it. But even in that, there was no power to deliver me from the bondage of sin that I was going to be facing as I moved on in age and life. I found out that Jesus has come to set me free. A gentleman that witnessed to me one night said these words. He says, Leonard, you tried everything in life. Why don't you give God a try? Next words out of his mouth is, listen, if, you don't, if it doesn't work for you, go back doing what you're doing. I, that sounds great, right? I, I wasn't coming to get saved and surrender my will anyways. But little did I know, God had other intentions. God had other plans. Because that night, April 9, 1983, I was completely different. Didn't have to worry about going to NAAA and every other A you want to call it. I didn't have to go to some 12-step program. All I had to do to go to one step, and that's for Jesus. When I went to him, everything else changed. Deliverance by the Holy Ghost, man. See, we need to go back and remember that Jesus has come to set us free. And I said, I'm not anti-doctors, but I am anti-people who use the, the world's system or economy to continue in their habit. Well, you know, they're just... Listen, just because you have a prescription for something doesn't mean it's legal. Doesn't mean you can't get addicted. Well, if the, do if the, if the doctor didn't want me addicted, he wouldn't have gave it to me. Sure he would, because he he's only treating a symptom. He doesn't know the problem. He doesn't understand what causes people to do the things they do. Our text pointed it out. Unwilling to know the truth, amen, that Jesus came to set them free, that he came to break the, the bondages of sin, the chains from off of people. These things that held us captive. This is why they say, well, take two Vicodins and call me in the morning. Because they don't have an answer. 
pastor made it very clear. We have the answer. And that answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. His message, his, his, his message, him himself. He says, I've come to open up the prison doors. I come to set people free. Come to break the bondages of sin, hell, and death in the grave. It's amazing because even the grave could not hold our Lord Jesus Christ. And he broke through for all of humanity. The excuse we make is, I've been like this a long time. Well, the answer is, are you tired of being like that? Right? I've been like this a long time. Okay. Are you tired of being like that? Well, I, I try. Jesus isn't a pair of shoes you try on. It's a lifestyle. I've come to bring deliverance. See, what we have is a, is a gospel that is a worldwide proclamation of liberty. That's what it is. And it works all throughout the world. In every nation, every city, every part of humanity, it works. I don't care how long you've been like that. In John chapter 5, there's a man at the pool of Bethesda. This man is there for 38 years. The, quite, the thing is that once a year, the angel of the Lord would come and stir the water. And the first one that stepped down, would be healed. Jesus shows up on the scene here in John chapter 5. Read it on your own. And he comes to this man and he says, do you want to be made well? You see, one thing they say in rehab is before you can start the process of healing, you must admit you have a problem. Well, let's be honest. Most people say, I don't have a problem. I can quit at any time. Now, you sound like I did. My wife used to say, why don't you quit doing drugs? Why don't you quit doing this? I'm like, because I don't want to, which was a lie. I couldn't. I had no power, no ability in myself to be able to do that. See, Christ has come to set people free. You have to understand this. We are still bound because we choose to be. There was a gentleman in my church for many years. And it's like every six months, this guy would go back to the streets. Finally, I'm like, Bro, you, like, you just like getting hot. You like being clean for a while and then just go right back and get hot. Because if you stay getting hot, you're going to end up dying. So just, tell, just say the truth, man. I like getting hot. But this is what the devil tells you. Oh, it's not, you, you don't, you know, you're okay. You're not like those people. You're different. Yeah, in your own mind. Because the Bible says, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. Well, I'm not like them. Well, thank God you're not. But doesn't mean you still don't need deliverance. This is what humanity is. The Bible goes, you know, our problem is too in the world is the world has forgotten that our nation was founded on biblical principles. I can remember when they started taking out the Pledge of Allegiance, going to school and 
when all of us would be out uh, in the schoolyard, they would, every morning would be there, uh, and they had a, a bell that would ring, and it would not ring. Uh, we would all go to where the, uh, the flagpole was, uh, and there we would sing the, 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 Amer the Pledge of Allegiance. But when that began to go out, everything else began to shift. We need to bring our society back to the truth. We need to call it for what it is. No, I'm not sick. I'm hooked like a dog and I can't quit. I want to look at secondly and finally. Faith brings results. Because if you're going to bring liberty to your soul and your spirit, you're going to have to act by faith. It's not going to go and just you know, take two aspirins and call me in the morning. That's not going to work. In and, and, uh, 1 John in chapter 1, verse 9, it says these words. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. In the book of John, I believe it's chapter 30, John Acts 19, verse 30. Jesus is on the cross. And as he's on the cross here, he says these words, it is finished. What he was saying was, Father, the very work that you have given me to do, I have just completed it. And when he spoke those words, it is finished. The Bible says he gave up the ghost. In other words, he went to heaven, gave it up. We have to believe tonight that Jesus, or what he did, the redemption that he did on the cross, we have to accept it by faith. It's finished. He closed the book. If you read John chapter 4, Pastor quoted or read him in the book. Of, he says, and he stood up in the synagogue and began to speak what was said, what that Isaiah the prophet said. And all of society are focusing on him to see what he was going to say, how he was going to respond. But you see, what they could not grasp was this. The thing that Jesus was speaking about was too big for their little mind. They could not comprehend that. We simply need to understand that we have been set free. That he's come to give us life more abundantly. But am I, you know, I don't understand. The, you know, God says, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. If that is true, then why do so many people, are, why are so many people still addicted? Why do they live be such below a standard that God has prepared for us? You see, I refuse to live a certain way. My mother all the time would get on me. Well, you don't need nothing. You have everything. I said, the difference between me and the rest of your kids, I made a choice to change my life. I made a choice to walk away from the family culture. And I pursued the life 
that God has for my life. Galatians in chapter 3 and verse 13 says these words. Galatians 3, 13. Galatians. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The sin. We've been delivered. <laughs> right? We sang that song all day long. I've been with Jesus. Really? Have you? Do you know what? Let me ask this question. When you're singing songs, do you listen to the words? Or is it just, all day long I've been with Jesus. Not understanding the potential of those songs. The songs aren't, you know, we just don't sing songs just to sing them. The songs have meaning to them. We used to sing a song, I went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole. What has he stolen from you this evening? Your health? Your family? Your loved ones? Are you still willing to go into the enemy's camp and take back? Because if not, then we lost already. You must believe that Jesus had accomplished everything that he said he, he did on the cross. He's accomplished everything. Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 and 22 says these words. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you would not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. If you have faith, whatever thing you ask, You know what faith is? Faith is not simply seeing God moving and then say, oh, I believe. Faith is simply saying, God, I know and I believe beforehand. In the book of John and chapter 11, verses 42 through 44, listen to these words because Jesus is standing at the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus is already dead for three days. But yet Jesus comes to the tomb and he stands there and he says these words. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud, loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Makes it very clear. He doesn't do anything. The first acknowledgement he does is he looks up to heaven. He says, Father, I know that you always hear me. But not for my sake, for these. Because in every one of us, there's that bit of unbelief. Yeah, I know God can do a miracle. Yeah, I know he's the healer. Yeah, I know he's the redeemer. Yeah, I know he's my provider. But you don't understand where I'm at, what I'm going through. I've tried. I just can't get free. 
your sin? Do you believe that Jesus came to set you free? Because if you don't believe it, then you're never going to be free. You're always going to find yourself struggling. You're always going to find yourself going back. Because why the temptation is so great. Just, oh, you're not like those people, man. They, you know, they need your crutch. Jesus, man, they, it's a crutch. Well, I needed a crutch. If that's what you want to call it. Faith is this. Faith is believing God before the results. There was a gentleman, he approaches his wife and he says, Hey, hon, I uh, put some money in your pocketbook. She must have looked at him kind of odd because his next question or answer or, or statement was, don't you believe me? She paused for a moment and said, oh, of course I believe you. I'm just thinking how, am, how, how I'm going to spend it all. That's faith. This woman didn't have it. But she already was spending it. It's like, you know, you're waiting on your income tax, right? You ain't got it. But how you have already had it spent? It's like, man, hey, I got. I'm, but finally, you don't get the answer. You don't get the check. You get a letter that says, sorry, you owe us money. Right? Faith is saying, God, I thank you beforehand. Hebrews 11.1 1 says these words. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, yet be the evidence of things not seen. You ain't saw it. So God, I'm going to believe you, and I'm going to thank you now because I know you're going to move. The battle is real, I will say that. The struggle is real. But the good news is he can overcome it. The good news is you can be free. You can walk out of this place a different individual. Why? Because Jesus says, I've come to set you free. And if you will believe that tonight, I'm telling you, God, you have just set up a platform for God to do a miracle in your life. Let's bow our heads tonight. Every head bowed this evening, every eye closed. First of all, this evening, perhaps you have come this evening. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're not saved this evening. You never asked Christ into your life. It's not about going to church. I went to church. But church didn't change me. I did the programs of church. It didn't change me. What changed me when I came to grips with my sin and realized I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I need something in my life besides myself. It was simply, God, if you're real. See, we're taught all of our lives there's a God in heaven. But our problem and the failure is this. We're never taught that he's died for our sins to give us a better life, to break the chains of bondage, to heal our body from sickness and disease. 
And this evening, perhaps you're here. You're not saved. You never asked Christ into your life. It's not simply about going to church. Because you can go to church like I used to. And the moment I walked at the door, I was getting high again. Because church didn't do it. And this evening tonight, you're here. You never asked Christ into your life or your backslidden. One time you knew the love of God, but you walked away. And by an uplifted hand tonight, you would say, Pastor Bravo, Pastor Williams, I'm not right with God. Can you pray with me? Can you pray for me? Anyone this evening under the sound of my voice, unsaved, backslidden, see that hand. Lift it. Who else? Say, oh, God, I need that. I need God to help me. I need God. I'm not saved, Pastor. I'm not, I'm not right. I need God. Will you lift it up tonight? Lift it up and hold it for a moment. If not, I want to change the order of service. I want to speak to you and I. See the pandemic of COVID really did a job on the human. They're full of anxiety. They're full of fear. Heart disease has skyrocketed. Suicide has gone up. Violence is at, is at its all-time high. Because we don't know how to control ourselves. We don't need rules and regulations. We don't need a 12-step program. What we need is a simple, I'm a sinner. God help me to come into my life. That is the cure for every epidemic you and I will ever face. That's the cure and the solution for every issue in life. Sin is the problem. And we as human beings, we indulge in the flesh way too much. This evening, perhaps you lifted your hand, I didn't see it. But we're going to open these altars. You can come and find a place to pray. These altars are open tonight. You come, let God help you. Amen. These altars are open. We're going to pray in a moment. Father, we thank you by the blood. Lord, we're asking you by the grace of God. We're asking you tonight by the blood. Father, that you'll breathe on this altar. God, that you will have your way. You will move by the Holy Ghost. You will breathe a supernatural breath. God, you will minister by the Holy Ghost, breaking God every stronghold, breaking every barrier. God, set them free by the blood. Set them free, oh God. We call on you, oh Lord.
Don't leave the altar. I want to do a couple of things very quickly tonight. As I said, I'm not anti-doctors. We need them. They serve their purpose. But my problem is this. There have been so many people that have been on prescription drugs because they have not found the cure. Doctors have, they don't have all the answers. This is why they said, here, take these. It'll relieve the pain. It will give you the ability to be able to at least cope with it. They said, we don't need to cope with it. We need deliverance. And I'm not saying that you can't have them. What I'm saying, though, that's not the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus never comes to this drowning man and hands him a volume and says, perish in peace. But he reaches out his nail-scarred hands and says, because I live, you shall live. That's what we need. And with our heads bowed this evening, I want you to say, I want you to think with me before I make a prayer. There's people here and you know it, and you've been bound by prescription drugs. Not to your fault, but now, it, it, it served its purpose, but now you find yourself unable to break it. Any addiction is bad. And there's people here, you're bound by certain things, certain sin in your life. And you, once, you, once you get ensnared, it's hard to walk away. There's people here tonight, you have anger issues. Your anger skyrockets. And you can't control it. We find ourselves making excuses for all of this. But I want to tell you tonight, Jesus came to set us free. And I know we don't want to admit, well, I'm bound. I, I'm addicted. I need this. But that's the reality of it. I said it caused, COVID caused health issues. But tonight, with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, if you will be honest with yourself and with God, you'll simply say, I need God to deliver me by an uplifted hand. Lift them up tonight. And lift them up. See these hands. Who else? Who else? Lift them up. Lift them up. Don't be shy. Lift them up. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to have you come up front and begin to call out your your issue. But I want you to lift your hand, acknowledging between heaven and earth that you have a problem. When you acknowledge that you have a problem, God has the ability to set you free. Amen. See these hands. Who else? Anybody else? Help quickly. Lift them up. There's people here. Your anger, man. Anxiety is overtaking you. I want you to say this prayer with our eyes closed. Lift our hands tonight. I want you to say this. Say, Father in heaven, I come to you this evening. Lord, acknowledging that I have a problem with anger, with anxiety, 
with prescription medication. Father, I'm asking you to break the bondages in my life. I accept the fact that you went to the cross to buy my sin from me. Lord, I thank you and I worship you. I give you all the praise and the glory for your deliverance this night. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Worship him and love him tonight. Father, by the blood, Father, breathe, Ira mama na rabo mo kalama na rebe kalama mama Father by the blood shalalama na rebe kalama na rebe kalama mama We thank you Lord alalama Give him a clap offering tonight let's worship him Shalalama na rebe kalama mama God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Listen, now you have to walk in faith. You have to simply say, you know what? God brought deliverance to me. I'm free. Some of you even feel different now. It's like if something just supernatural, something warm came through your body. That was the spirit of God. God wants you to know you're free. You can be seated. I just want to pray for a couple of people very quickly. I'm going to pray for a couple of people. God is a loving God. He's a very gracious God very merciful. Even when we don't deserve his grace and his mercy. Can I pray for you? Why don't you come? You as well. God's hand is bigger than you can imagine. God's hand reaches to the ends of the earth. And so many times, man, you feel God challenging you and responding. But the problem is we're okay. And we know we God cannot help us unless we admit, God, I need your help. There's things, my brother, inside, deep inside. And you find these things manifesting at certain times. And you have no answer. I can tell you, I can feel right now. The rage. God wants to set you free, but it's your choice. Follow me? It doesn't matter. Listen, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what's happened. What matters is Jesus said, I come to set you free. I can tell you about the tears being shed at night. The anxiety that overwhelms you. It's like certain places, man, you get this overwhelming feeling. One of them, you feel like you're just by yourself. The other one, it seems like everybody's looking at you. And that's not true. This anxiety has caused you to do certain things 
to say certain things and you don't know why. But God does. Are you a bad person? No. Because that's what the devil wants you to think. Oh, you think God cares about you? Yeah, he does. Don't be so hard on yourself. God's going to help both of you. I'm going to ask a question. Are you guys right with God? You say, you hesitate a little bit, my brother. Yeah, why don't you pray? Can you hear you? Yeah, yeah. Listen, we all got issues, man. We all got issues. Don't let the suit fail you. Don't let the suit deceive you, my bro. I've been there, done that. But God really does want to come in and help you. Why don't you say this? Say, Father in heaven. Go to repeat it as well, dear. Say, Father in heaven. I repent of all my sins and my anger and every lie that I've ever spoken. Lord, I'm asking you right now to forgive me and to cleanse me and to deliver me from all of these problems that I, have, that I have buried for so long. And I'm asking you right now, come into my life and to be my Lord and my Savior. Father, I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the blood that you shed for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I pray tonight, touch them by the Holy Ghost. God, breathe even now. Settle free in Jesus' name. Give God a clap offering tonight. You can, you can sit in there in the room where God's going to find you. Make a decision. In or out. God's been challenging you for some time. and He's been on you. It's almost like God has sent the hounds of heaven on you. There is no peace. You're not assured of life. You even said these words. I wish these people would just leave me alone. Yeah, I'm one of them, but I ain't going to leave you alone. Because if I leave you alone, I'm not answering to you. I got to answer to God. Right? Just like you. You're going to answer. You're going to have to give an account for your life. There's not going to be any excuses. The only thing God's going to ask you, what did you do with my son? And as you stand there before him, he's going to look deep into your eyes, man, and he's going to see your soul. And as he's looking, man, you're going to feel the piercing of him. You struggle on a regular basis. Right now, I, I can tell you to think, why did I come? I didn't come tonight. It was a bad night. No. You came because you were drawn by God. Give me a hand. Why don't you pray with me? Say, Father in heaven, Father in heaven I'm asking you right now you to right forgive now. me to forgive of all of my sins, all of my sins and to come into my life and, come into my life and to be my Lord and my and Savior. My Lord and my Savior. Father, I thank you for your redemption, for your redemption that you bought me back you bought me from back the penalty of death, hell, and the grave. I thank you for your blood, and I plead it upon my mind and upon my life. I ask you, enter into my heart, be my Savior tonight. Father, touch him by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
When I walked over earlier, he looked at me. He said, nah, I know he's coming. <laughs> yeah, but if God wasn't talking to me, I wouldn't be coming. It's an up and down roller coaster, man. One day in, one day out. It's like you have to put your feet on solid ground. It's not enough to simply come, all right, I'm going to do this. But you have to sell out. 110%. And what you're seeking is not going to be found anywhere but in the will of God. And that's where you're going to find the peace. That's where you're going to find the joy. David says, do not remove thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't take away your spirit. And because of circumstances of life, you've lost that joy factor. You've said this, man, this is a struggle. It's harder than I thought it was going to be. But the good thing is you're here. You follow me? You're here. You could have been in and you had other intentions, but you're here. Why are you here? Because God brought you here. Why? Because God wants to speak to you. We're not perfect. I mean, let me set you free there with that one. We ain't perfect. You, you, you're hard then on yourself. It's like, and God's talked to you before. But you said the same thing, you know, it's like, can you guys just leave me alone? I just you want to come up, be myself, leave me alone. No, God won't let us. But I'm going to tell you this, he's going to break in on you. The fear factor, dear, bound by fear, intimidation. You've asked the question, God, how long? I got to dig. Until he breaks through. And you've heard things about people. People have spoken things about you. And because you've heard them, those things, or they gotten back to you, those things cut you like a knife. The pain is there, yes. Is it real? Yes. I'm not a two. Not taking nothing away from that. But God wants you to know He's the God that heals, dear. And He's going to begin to breathe on you. He's going to begin to move from the inside. And you're going to find, man, something happening in your spirit. Even now, you feel God already doing it. Why? Because He cares and He loves you. Father, I pray for them. Touch them by the Holy Ghost tonight. God, breathe right now supernatural grace. God, break every bondage, every lie of hell and torment within their mind. Father, we're grateful for what you've done, what you will do. Loose them right now by the Holy Ghost. Give God a clap off him tonight. Since they won't see you, I want to pray for you, dear. Why don't you come? Yep. Yeah, life is rough. Don't worry about them laughing. Don't worry about them. They'll be all right. And I'm not even going to speak to you. Because God's already all over you. But you have to know. God is on your 
nor the willpower. You're right. But God does. And the pain, he tells us, that hurts. The hurts, that hurts. That hurts. But the good news is, you can leave this place with that. You have to let things go. You can't hold on for things forever. past hurts, the past rejects you. You have to release it. And when you begin to do that, you're going to find God in a new way. You're going to experience him in a totally different way that you never experienced him before. God's not mad. He can never be mad. We may disappoint him, but that does not change his love and his affection for us. The tears, they roll off you at night. You wake up and you're just staring at the wall. Your mind's running. Your mind's running. And it's in those times of night when nobody sees. You've spoken to God. You said, God, I have to know where you're at. And you found him. Or should I say he found you? Why? Because he knows you. Father, I pray tonight, touch her by the Holy Ghost. God, I'm asking you your sovereign grace and mercy. Oh, let the Spirit of God saturate our life. God, touch her from within. Oh, God, supernatural grace, supernatural power by the Holy Ghost. Let's give God a clap offer tonight. You have a pain that's in your midsection. Listen to me. It's in your midsection. It moves around to your side. And the other one, you got a pain that's on your side. And it seems like it goes back and forth and it travels down your leg. I want to pray for you to come very quickly. Or is it tonight? You come right now. God wants to heal you. Come. Amen. Who else? the other one. The other one, it moves around. As I said, it moves back and forth. I'm going to come on and pray for you very quickly tonight. I'm not going to hold this. That's it. Amen. That's the way it is. Make some room out there for her. How long has it been there? It's been about more like seven years. Seven years. I think seven years too long. You know, the number seven in the Bible is perfection year. <laughs> if you got seven years, then guess what? God's going to make you perfect right now. Thank you, Lord. You ought to pray about quit worrying. Yeah. I'm just telling you. Yeah, sometimes we need some reaffirming. Because sometimes we're just a little slow to grasp it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The weight that sits on you. Yeah. That's natural. Is it right? No. Because all you're going to do is decay. Begin to fade. You begin to fade with almost seemingly like no remembrance. But God's going to set you free, dear.
How long has that pain been there? Three years. Three years. Yours? Nine months. Nine months. Why don't you say this? All, this? all three of you say this. Say, Father in heaven. Father. I take dominion. I take and, authority and authority over this spirit, over this spirit of, sickness of sickness and death. And death. I cast it out, I cast it by, out the by the blood of Jesus. You foul tormenting you demon. Foul, tormenting spirit. You will release my body, you will release my body and my mind. And my the, mind. Blood the blood of Jesus breaks your hold. Breaks your the, blood hold. Of Jesus the blood of Jesus sets me free. Sets me free. Right now, right now you no longer Right now, you are no longer have right away, have right to, away my life to my life and my spirit. To my spirit. Loose some right now by the blood. Father, by the blood, touch him by the Holy Ghost. Father, by the blood, touch him by the Holy Ghost. Father, by the blood, touch him by the Holy Ghost. Let's give God a clap off for tonight. What's the difference? What's the difference? Where's the pain? Just tight. It's going to leave. Tightness is going to loose it up. What's, what's yours? Well, there's not going to be no pain. But I also tell you, you got you, but also you got a short leg. I don't, I don't know that. I'm just telling you. No, 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 no. Literally, you literally have a short leg, dear. See, that, and that, and that, you know, my, my joke to that is not only do you have one short leg, but you got two. Because God's going to, your leg's going to grow. Where's your pain? I don't feel it right now. Oh, you want to feel it? No, I don't want to feel oh, it. Oh, right I, you know. <laughs> Maybe it's, uh, I don't feel it anymore. Or the, uh, well, I don't feel it right now. Well, I can let you feel it right now, but I don't think you want that to happen. Why do you worry? You just thought I was going to leave you, let you, I, I talk to you, and that's it. You're going to leave. But no, that's not going to happen. Sleepless night. You can tell me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, all you want. I'm just telling you what God's telling me. I don't know what's going on with you. The battle of your mind is short. You worry about this, you worry about that, you worry if it's going to rain tomorrow or not. And if you're just one of those individuals, you worry about everything in life. What you need is the peace of God. The Bible says that the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Yeah, it's you and me. The hurt is still there. But you thought you could hide. And you have hidden it for so long, for so long. But God says it's time to deal with it. Don't hold on to grudges. Don't hold on to the past. Because holding on to our past does nothing for us, dear. We're the only ones that get hurt. Why don't you say this? Say, Father in heaven. Father in heaven. I take dominion over this lie of hell, of worry and uneasiness of spirit. Father, I thank you for your healing power and your deliverance. God, I'm asking you right now, give me peace and understanding. God, give me rest that is sweet. I thank you in Jesus' name. Touch her by the blood right now. God, do a miracle in Jesus' name. Let me have that chair. Don't leave yet. You're not going yet. I'm not done with you. I need a chair.
Еврейский говорят. Just set it all the way back, Cody. Set it all the way back. No, against that one. Because, yeah, he's back. No, you ain't taking your shoes off. Oh, it's all right. I don't need one. Don't worry about it. You ain't, you're not, listen, you don't worry, got to worry about your shoe being tight. You ain't going nowhere right now. Why you guys laugh? I'm not funny. Just kidding. Just put your hips back. No, put your hips back and let me slide them. See the top? See the bottom? Looser right now. Father, we thank you by the blood. What happened? <laughs> Did you have pain in your back? Where's that? Move it. Come on, quit being so gentle. So where's the pain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you, or you, or you go to karaoke night and act like a clown, one of the two. You don't, know, you know. Where's the pain? Let's give God praise tonight. I know we got service in the morning. Sorry for keeping you so late, but let's sin. Let's let God help us. Thank God, I really do appreciate all of you that came this evening. If you came from other churches, I really do appreciate you. And I, that's all I have as pastor comes this evening. In class. Hey, man, we appreciate that this evening. Listen, where did things like this happen? In church. In the presence of God. This is why we say that the more you're in the presence of God, the more God can speak to you. But we can come up with so many excuses as to why I can't, why I can't, why I can't. I encourage you, come back tomorrow if you're not part of the local church. Uh, go to your, to your church if you're part of the local church here. Be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the evening at 6. Bring someone. Listen, you know God spoke to you. Tell someone what God said to you. Tell someone about the supernatural work that God did this evening and bring them. Pray for them. Pray tonight and come against all distractions and all obstacles. But let's be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. We're going to be dismissed. Manny, would you lift your voice? <laughs>